Welcome back to Bumblebee. I'm your host, Kyle McWaters. And I'm Taylor McWaters. And this week, we're looking at 10 more disturbing creatures from history that actually existed. Yeah, part three, too. There's a lot of these. They actually existed. Huh? Number 10. Longisquama. Longisquama is a very crucial genus of extinct reptile. I feel like I already sound like David Attenborough, dude. The Longisquama in Cygnus from the middle to late Triassic formation. That was not bad. That was not bad. Come on. Longisquama means long scales. In Cygnus means small. The Longisquama in Cygnus is notable for a number of long structures that appear to grow from its skin. Little mohawk boys, you know? These things were rad looking. They were diepsids, which was a reptile subclass. A small group of climbing and gliding reptiles. Little jumper dudes. These guys were awesome. Little mohawk tree dudes. They lived in forests located on the supercontinent once called Pangaea. Its most notable feature is a double row of long scale like pins running along its back, forming six to eight pairs. It had one pair of scales for each of its pair of ribs, like knight's armor, little mini tectonic plates mixed with feathers on top, and we get Longisquamous scales. Could be rows of wolverine claws, could be rows of feathers or dragonfly-ish wings. Scientists still don't know. This little mohawk boy is sick though. Little flying dude. Those are definitely little dragonfly wings, I'm calling it. Number nine, Carnotaurus. Okay, Kyle and I, we had a different dinosaur animated movie growing up as kids, okay? Today you've got the little dinosaur that's cute, that's great animation. Back when we were younger, we had the scary dinosaur movie. Remember that one? Where none of them talked with the Carnotaurus guy as the villain. Yeah, that one didn't talk. It was just the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm pretty sure I walked out of that theater. Didn't say a peep. And this guy didn't have to, really. Look at him. The Carnotaurus was a unit. Yeah, they thankfully disappeared 69 million years ago. Nice. They were around the same size as a T Rex, coming in at about 29 feet long, but they were nicknamed meat eating bulls. So, yeah, that ought to tip you why they were the villains in said movie. They would run at about 25 miles an hour. They're one of the fastest and largest moving theropods to ever live. Its arms were smaller than that of a T-Rex, so we can roast them in some capacity, okay? We got them on some, you know, on something. But honestly, it didn't matter because this one had horns, hence the meat-eating bull alias. It was rediscovered in 1984 by Jose Bonaparte in Argentina. They've only discovered one skeleton of these things, so hopefully there weren't too many of these poking around. Yeah, Aina Linda took me to see this one. I'm pretty sure I walked out. It fucked me up good. The scary guy, he runs out so fast. God, he's so fast. Number eight, Plesiosaurus. Ah yes, the Plesiosaurus. A genus of extinct, very large marine reptile that lived during the early Jurassic period. It is known by nearly complete skeletons from the waters and rocks in England. It is known for its small head, long and slender neck, broad turtle-like body, short tail, and two pairs of large paddles for limbs, and is apparently the legendary, the one and only Loch Ness Monster. Cue the bagpipes. The first complete skeleton of a plesiosaurus was discovered by paleontologist and fossil hunter Mary Anning in Jurassic Age rocks December 1823. Plesiosaurus are moderate size compared to what it was swimming around them at the time, usually only about 5 meters in length, and about 500 pounds. They had the head like a big pit bull, and the teeth like a big pit bull. They fed mainly on clams and snails. Okay, this is like a medium scary now, all of a sudden. Number seven. The Great Auk. Once thriving in colonies off North Atlantic coasts, the Great Auk would grow 30 inches long, which isn't too scary, but hear me out. It had tiny wings that would only be used to swim. They were only 13 centimeters long. Kind of cute, but again, hear me out. They were small and jarring to look at. I mean, if this thing was coming at me today, I'd certainly have a rough time. But thankfully for hungry sailors, the Great Auk was greatly defenseless. Yeah, oops, sorry, we got a little, little snacky. Around the 1500s, European fishermen discovered this perfect area for hunting, and it just happened to be where most, if not all, these great ox were living and thriving. Yeah, Newfoundland looked like the iceberg and club penguin. It was just like, mm, stacked, just looking real good. Now the iceberg and club penguin is gone, as are these guys, so, you know, not a bad bit. Also, I'm broken inside, I miss Club Penguin, RIP. By 1950, the last two known specimens were hunted by a single fisherman, hunted on LD Island, just off the coast of Iceland. Scientists plan on using genetic information extracted from their fossils or preserved organs. Remember those jars of organs, those guys with the random jars of exotic bird pieces? They come in handy, apparently. They plan on editing their DNA into the closest living species, which is now the razor-built ox. So yeah, the organization Revive and Restore is behind the wheel on this one. Number six. Horseshoe crab. Horseshoe crabs are marine water arthropods of the family Lemulidae. Despite their name, they are not actually anything like crabs or crustaceans. 
Then what are they, dude? They're technically chalicerates, most closely related to arachnids, like spiders and scorpions. Awesome. Like, what are we looking at here? What, what is this thing? Fossil records for horseshoe crabs extend back as far as 480 million years ago. Nice, thank God. Wait a second, nope, they're still around. <laughs> These shelly dudes like to keep it shallow, however, in murky waters, mostly in Southeast Asia. Horseshoe crabs use hemocyanin to carry oxygen through their blood, which actually turns their blood blue due to the copper in said proteins. This feature is similar to what white blood cells do for us, and because of this, these guys are unfortunately blood harvested every year by us for medicine. Non-lethal, which involves collecting and bleeding the creature and then releasing them back into the sea. Yeah, I'd be way too scared to grab this thing. Are you kidding me? Like, I respect the animal kingdom, but like at a distance. Number five, Linenicus. It's not a Decepticon, it's a Linenicus. Close though. If you thought a T-Rex had tiny arms, wait till you see this old dude. Linenicus monodactylus, these guys roamed the lands of Mongolia 65 million years ago. I'm a fan of this dinosaur. Honestly, it's scary and I get that, but I would honestly own this one as a pet. It was actually just giving the other dinosaurs the middle finger its entire life, basically, if you look at them. It had a little arm and one finger with one claw. That's what kind of situation. It was like Wolverine. It was like the, the, the chick from Wolverine, the one scratchy thing instead of the three. She had the one. Or Deadpool from the X-Men that no one liked. Also, one blade. That one didn't work. In terms of these other monsters on this list, it's quite small. So, you know, maybe just one little kick to the neck. Maybe you'll survive. Coming in at the size of a parrot, this little guy laid eggs and carved through everything and anything that snuck into their nest. Yeah, it was a carnivore. So, T-Rex, Velociraptor, this little guy, all coming after you. If you don't hit that thumbs up, he's gonna get his middle finger and poke you. Number four, the Glyptodon. Basically an ancient armadillo. Yeah, now we're talking. With its rounded bony shell house and squat limbs, it resembles a giant dinosaur turtle, aging it between 5.3 million to 12,000 years ago. This thing was old, old. Glyptodon meaning grooved tooth because of its square teeth. This thing was big, 10 feet long, weighing as much as like 4,000 pounds. Like picture a Volkswagen Beetle. This giant armadillo existed in present day North and South America. Though the Glyptodon had a powerful tail and an armored back made of a thousand bony plates, it likely lived a fairly peaceful existence. Vegetarian, nice smile, this thing was killing it. It mostly ate grass and never really had to even worry about getting into fights. That being said, the Glyptodon could easily defend itself I mean, Captain America's shield for a back and a sledgehammer for a tail. It could literally Hulk smash said car. Early hunters likely stalked the Glyptodon for meat and its shell. To kill it, they had to turn it on its back, basically tipping over a car. Yeah, gotta give it up to the early humans. They were badass and strong. Number three, Spinosaurus. Another Jurassic Park star, and rightfully so. The largest carnivorous dinosaur of all time, even bigger than a T-Rex. Can you imagine that? I feel sick to my stomach already. 93 million years ago, they stopped terrorizing the lands of what is now Egypt and Morocco. Now, if you didn't already guess, its name translates to spine lizard. And that spine was quite long. Coming from me, like, that says a lot. The Spinosaurus would measure up to 60 feet long, and aside for its back, one of the most notable features is its six foot long head. Yeah, not neck, six foot long head. That's an Egyptian god. That's like, this is terrifying. Its mouth was similar to a crocodile's with straight, sharp teeth. He would just do the alligator smack and then just chomp the shit out of you and yours. Paleontologists from the University of Pennsylvania believe that this guy used to swim as well. Because where the first Spinosaurus fossil was found, that used to be the Beharia Oasis in Egypt, a massive swamp. Water or land, I want nothing to do with it. Long mouth, stretch neck McGee, stinky ancient alligator breath, get out of here. Never. Turtles, not even. Number two, Megalania. Megalania. The Varanus priscus. This extinct species of giant monitor lizard is a part of the megafauna that inhabited Australia during the Pleistocene. It is the largest terrestrial lizard known to have existed, reaching an estimated length of seven meters. Yeah, length of a killer whale. Weighing around 5,000 pounds. Megalania is thought to have had very early and similar ecology to the modern Komodo dragon. The fossils of lizards in Australia date back around 50,000 years ago. The First Nations peoples of Australia encountered these ancient dragons, and we actually hunted these things way, way back. These things can sprint three meters a second, Taylor. God, he's so fast. Whenever I'm tired at the gym, I'm just gonna picture this giant lizard just like trucking behind me. From its size alone, scientists suggest it would have fed mostly upon large-sized marsupials and mammals such as the Australian lion. 
Oh, that's good. Yeah, this thing ate lions, dude. With its heavily built limbs and body, a large skull, a jaw full of serrated blade-like teeth. Some scientists regard Megalania as the apex predator for the last thousands of years. Um, yeah, I'd like to think so. It's Australia too, dude. That makes it like 18 times worse. Oh yeah, and it was venomous. Of course, of course. And finally, number one, Titan Boa. The worst for last. Here we go, my sweet bees. The Titan Boa was over 40 feet long. That's two thirds of a bowling lane. In case you want to imagine it in your head. There you go. Every time you let that ball go, just think. Snake, 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 stole snake. That's how long it was. It's quite horrifying. And if we were born 58 million years ago, we'd have to avoid being eaten by this thing. Again, we grew up watching Anaconda, okay? We know how scary these things can be, especially when Angelina Jolie's dad's running the ship. He doesn't know the maps well. He's gonna take it into a swampy area. Snake's gonna come out, ruin the day. Paleontologists found this beast recently. Its fossil was excavated back in 2004, believe it or not, in Colombia near Lake Maracaibo. But it wasn't until 2009 where it was publicly described. Yeah, it took them five years to be like, should we tell them? I don't know, why should we? I mean, do we have to? So far, we only have the remains of 30 adult Titan Boas. That's 29 too many, if you ask me. I say we, like ourselves, have one. No, we don't have it. I I imagine that, I'd be sick. Even people who have snakes as pets, I'm never gonna visit. Sorry, you're alone for the holidays this time. Just you and your snake with a human name for some reason. Enjoy it. He doesn't bite. I'm like, cool, I still don't like him. There you have it folks, 10 more disturbing creatures that actually existed. I have Goosebumps, and I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. And I've been Kyle McWaters. We'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> Remember which movie I'm talking about? No, I talk about it. It's called Dinosaur. Yeah, it's just like, at the beginning, it's just asteroids, like... Like, it's so scary. Just trucking? Absolutely. <laughs>